Hey, LifePoint, I want you to know if you're getting this, it means that we know that you're a member. So if you are wondering, maybe this will clear up some of the confusion. But really what I wanted to do is I wanted to take a moment and recap our tribe night last night. A lot of initiatives were shared. We talked about our Guatemala initiative and what some of the pending things may be. And we're excited to see where God is leading us there. And we look forward to being able to bring back a report to you in December about our next steps. We shared about the Hilltop Hope Initiative and the mobile kitchen and all the pieces are coming together with the Hilltop. And we were able to pray over Pastor Ben as the opioid epidemic is just continuing to ravage that community in the Hilltop where they're investing and where we're partnering. We also shared about rebranding. And we, we shared with you the name, the Refinery Church, and, and how we asked you to vote on adopting that as a, as a name. And we're in that process of moving forward with trademarking and the Secretary of State and all those pieces of the puzzle. And 95% of the people that voted, voted in favor of changing the name. And we talked about life groups and our need for life groups. And it was really exciting. And we, we, if you're interested in leading, we're interested in helping you do that well. And Dan and I will come beside you any way that we can to help on-ramp you as a leader of life groups to help others walk intentionally for eternity. And then we talked about a few outreaches that are coming up that you can be a part of, like a raking day and different things. But there's something that I want to really share with you this morning that has been heavy on my heart today. And I was reading in the Bible, um, I was reflecting on the words of, of the Apostle Paul when he wrote to the church in Corinth. The, the first letter he sent that we know as the book of 1 Corinthians was sent because he heard that there was, there was dissension in the church and there was quarreling in the church. And so he wrote a letter in response. And, and I want to read you some of his words. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another so there may be no divisions among you and that you may be perfectly united. Perfectly united, that's pretty big. In mind and thought. Why would Paul say that? What was it that was generating it? So he heard that there's some, some grumbling here, there was some quarreling, but there's a bigger reason because Paul knew this. He knew that if the church, if the church became divided, then the enemy would distort truth and would get them off mission. Paul wasn't saying they had to agree on every small thing. He was saying, make sure you agree on the, the major things Don't, and not to major on the minors. And I want us to do the same. Listen, if you call this to your church, I want you to know that I'm glad you do. But I also am gonna ask you that if you have questions during this process of change, that you come to people, like if you have questions that, that you want me to answer, come to me. I'm your pastor. You're allowed to talk to me. But don't let the enemy get a foothold in our church because whenever change comes, insecurities percolate to the top and negativity can be generated. And I'm gonna ask you not to be a negative person in this process. That's essentially what Paul was asking the church in Corinth to do. Because when you give in to negativity, it's not long before the church is compromised in mission. So we value agenda harmony. I'm not asking you to agree with everything that I, I like. I don't know if you like the color orange. We don't have to necessarily agree on that. That's not a major deal. What I am asking you to agree on is that the name of this church will never define us. Our devotion to Jesus Christ as a body of believers will always define us. Name just describes us. What I'm asking you to agree on is to trust our staff. Some people are still asking, why did, why did we hire Pastor Dan? Is Pastor Brad leaving? I'm not intending to leave. A matter of fact, with Pastor Dan being here, I think it's gonna help me stay longer. He is a great implementer. So I'm asking you to just trust that we are trying to lead this church missionally to engage a culture, to make a difference for eternity. Because hell is well, well overpopulated and eternity's on the line. And I hope that you'll help us 
maintain a gender harmony and engage and be a part of our initiatives.